Hello and welcome to Agrin Infotech, your go-to channel for efficient data analysis and visualization using our programming. Today, we're going to learn how to visualize data using bar charts, add error bars, and put lettering on the bars for multiple variables in a quick and easy way. So, let's dive right in. You can access code scripts used in our videos by visiting our website at www.agrininfo.com. On the home page, hover your cursor over the Analysis tab and select our program from the drop-down menu. Here, you'll find all the resources related to data analysis and visualization. The best part is that you can effortlessly copy the codes by clicking the Copy button on the top right corner of the code block. Use these codes to replicate the same analyses and visualizations. First, we need to load the necessary libraries. We'll be using ggplot2 for plotting, dplyr and tidr for data manipulation, agricoli for statistical analysis, reshape2 for data reshaping, and readxl for reading excel files. Let's load these libraries. Now, let's import our dataset. We'll be using the readxl function from the readxl library to read our excel data file named as data underscore rice.xlsx. Let's take a look at the first few rows of our dataset using the head function and check the column names with the names function. The dataset comprises one replication variable, one treatment variable, which contains different nitrogen rates, and the remaining variables are response variables. To facilitate further analysis of variance, we will first convert the replication and nitrogen rate variables into factor variables. To verify that we have correctly converted these variables to factor variables, we will use the str function to examine the structure of the data variables. We will also define object that contains all response variable names. From third column to the last column in the data frame we have response variable names. Next, we'll perform an analysis of variance or ANOVA on our data. We'll initialize an empty list to store our ANOVA results. Then, we'll loop over each response variable, construct the formula for ANOVA, perform the ANOVA, and store the result in our list. We are checking whether the variable name contains a space. If it does, we enclose the variable name in backticks. It checks whether the variable name contains a space using the grepl function. If a space is found in the variable name, the code encloses the variable name in backticks. The code constructs an analysis of variance formula using the variables i, the response variables, rep, and nitrogen rates. Then it creates a formula object by combining these variables with the tilde symbol, which represents the formula structure. The AOV function is used to calculate the ANOVA result based on the formula. The ANOVA result is stored in a list called ANOVA result and prints the relevant results. After performing ANOVA, we'll conduct the least significant difference test. We'll initialize an empty list to store the output of the LSD test. Then, we'll loop over each response variable, conduct the LSD test, merge the groups with the corresponding means using row names, compute the standard error, and print the result. Now that we have our LSD test results, let's prepare our data for plotting. We'll combine all the data frames in our list into one data frame, remove everything after the dot and backticks if present in the variables column, and apply the factor with specific levels to the end rate column. Finally, let's visualize our data. We'll create a bar chart with error bars and lettering on the bars for multiple variables. We'll use the ggplot function from the ggplot2 library to create our plot. The code starts by selecting relevant data from the combined data frame. It filters rows where the variables column matches the response variables. The variables used in the plot are end rate, response, and groups. The x-axis represents the nitrogen rate as a factor variable. The y-axis represents the response variable. The bars are generated using geometry bar function with the stat as identity argument, and they are colored based on the nitrogen rate. Error bars are added using geometry error bar function to show the variability around the mean response. Text labels are placed above the bars using geometry text function. These labels correspond to the group's matrix. The title, axis labels, and fill legend are customized using labs function. We made several styling and layout enhancements to improve the quality of the plot. We rotated the x-axis text labels by 45 degrees to enhance readability. Using the facet wrap function, 
we created separate panels, facets, for each variable in the dataset. This allows us to compare response variables across different levels of the end rate factor. We customized the legend position, panel spacing, and grid lines to improve aesthetics. We used a palette of five distinct colors from the JCO color palette in the XI package. And that's what we've created. If you're interested in similar tutorials, we also have one on rapidly creating publication ready ANOVA tables in our simply click here, or you'll find the link included in the video description. If you found this video informative, please hit the like button. For more updates on similar content, consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next tutorial.